it, what he did here remains unequal, and I think for a long time, if ever, anybody will equal what he did here. You are lucky to have him today. He will speak with you and to you. It pains me that we are in a hurry, that he has to leave now. If he had, to, if he had time, he would have stayed here to interact with you closely. But there will be other days. Your Excellency, please speak to your people. Thank you. The Emperor, the Conqueror, the Champion, the Lion is here. Trendybeast.com Please be seated. Please, please. The Vice Chancellor and all other persons, the Vice Chancellor, the Chairman, and all other persons on the high table, let me say all protocols very respectfully and duly observed. And let me start by apologizing that I am the one who is rushing this. I did plead when my situation changed, I pleaded with the organizers and said, start by nine, please, so that I can have additional time because I must catch a flight for 12.30 from Anambra State Airport. But unfortunately for me, I was here by nine. But some of you were, some of you students were not here by nine. So I had to go, thank God for the VC, I had to go to his office and say, VC, I didn't come to disturb you, so don't worry about me. I'm just here waiting for the students to be ready so I can go, but that's not a problem. For interaction, like Okuna said, there will be days of interaction. And you're philosophers. Philosophers don't need too many talk. I think if you can, as yes, a philosopher, you can take whatever is going to happen today from what the fathers, the right prayers. That prayers is deep. He said, those who please God, those what they do is pleased by the Almighty and the world. So you have to not just please God, have to please people here. I just do a very quick reading of what I've uh, been able because when you talk to philosophers, at times you write. These days I'm meant to write. They said you must read because if you don't read, people can interpret it. Anyhow, and philosophers, when they start the interpretation, you don't know where it's going to end. So I address you today as a philosopher, because I'm one of you, and I believe in it. <laughs> Believing, pondering the significance of the World Philosophy Day, the day recognized as paramount, that recognizes paramount rule of philosophy often referred as queen of all sciences by Socrates. And in promoting critical thinking, ethical reflection, intellectual discourse about the future of humanity in our diverse world. Socrates was proclaimed that unexamined life is not worth living. This one is my muscle. This one is my life. And I will emphasize it when I finish. Emphasizing the importance of asking profound questions about the human of the future and the future of human. The importance of seeking what lies ahead of humanity. Especially now that we stand on precipice of rapidly evolving work. Socrates wants the future of human encompasses both physical and psychological aspect of species. From a fiscal standpoint, we anticipate significant advancements in biotechnology, genetic engineering, and medical sciences, offering potential to enhance longevity, eradicate disease, and augment our physical capabilities. In the past, scientific progress often seen beyond belief. But the remarkable advances in smartphones, electric vehicles, biotechnology, quantum computing, renewable energy, and advanced robotics have expanded the realm of possibilities and shaped our future. These innovations have the potential to address 
pressing global challenges while providing new opportunities for exploration, discovery, and improved quality of life. Digital age has already reshaped our mental landscape. With fusion of human and artificial intelligence, promising remarkable possibilities. Science may one day create being closely resembling ourselves, a prospect that should no longer surprise us. Recounting what science and technology have done so far is bewildering. However, amid this infinite possibility we ponder, what future do we envision for humanity? And what kind of society shall we build for future generations? Should technology dictate our authenticity? Even the biblical story of creation is about the charge by God to man to conquer and master his environment. This implies that we should remain master at all times, man does, does this by insistence that ethical, social, environmental, and moral consideration must form part of human of the future. This is the part of tax of philosophy that is facing you and I today. In a world of advanced technology, we must ensure that innovations are accessible to all. Reducing inequalities, addressing issues like digital equity, yeah. data privacy, and fair resource distribution. Environmental sustainability is another critical aspect. With the climate change and ecological degradation, Reminding us that our actions today profoundly impact the planet. We must transition towards sustainable practices, prioritize renewable energy, and protect our ecosystem. When the drums of war were being beaten in Ukraine, there were frightening reviews of some ammunition said to be capable of wiping out all lives on earth. Thinking about such destructive capacities of technology, one is inclined to believe that the human of the future has the great responsibility of remaining sane. Such technology, as well as advances in biotechnology, artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, demand rigorous ethical framework that defines the human of the future as a moral compass of humanity. Education plays a pivotal role in shaping this future human, emphasizing critical thinking, creativity, and global awareness. For us, it is right education must be geared towards understanding the implication of whatever man does in the society. How many of us understand the need to humanize technology and make it serve the good of man rather than good of individuals? How many of us understand the moral and ethical implication of some of the things we do? It is sad to note that sometimes Man of today allows development, even on several ones, to dictate his understanding of life. This is why the pursuit of knowledge about the human condition remains an enduring endeavor. As Nigerians, we must confront the political challenges in our country and our our parts. As it is now, Part of the future we are building for our country is that of electoral impunity, licensing of even the most despicable acts 
Our generation have lost it. I took every opportunity I have to appeal to those coming after us, which is you, to abort such indulgences and resolve to do the right things. So, in conclusion, the human of the future and the future of women are intertwined. Our choices of values, actions today shape our evolution. We stand at a crossroad with the power to harness technology for greater good or succumb to short sightedness and division. And that brings me to where I will make comments that what I said about the issue of unexamined life is not worth living. That for me is the fundamental thing about philosophy. That whatever you do in life, you must ask yourself a question. What am I doing? This thing I'm doing, what is implication to humanity? How does it benefit humanity? Because whatever action we take must be at helping humanity. And it brings me, as we talk about this future, people often ask me when I travel, why are things not working in Nigeria? Why are things not working in Africa? And I always tell them because there's no critical thinking. People don't think about what they're doing. They don't even know what they're doing because often a time you ask yourself. I gave certain examples yesterday and everything. We today have governments all over Nigeria. From local governments to, every, to the central government. It's important that it's straight whatever we talk about. But none of you here can say this is what our government is trying to do. Nobody here. I have been in schools all over the world, if you have happened to read my CV, where the first thing I do whenever I get to any school is to ask people there, what do you think American government or this government is going to do in the future? How are we going to what is this thing you're reading, this thing you're doing, how is it going to benefit your society? And you'll be shocked when they tell you how it's going to benefit your society. But if I ask you now, this thing you're doing or what you're reading here, how is it going to benefit Nigeria? You don't know. You just want to have a degree. And then when you have a degree, you spend years, people telling you there's no job. Because those who are serving us do not put time for unexamined life. Why are we going to take this action? Where is this action going to lead? Otherwise, the world has a critical development plan that is acceptable to everybody. First is health. When you talk about, when they talk about uh, Life expectancy is actually health. Today in Nigeria, our health system is collapsed. And your health system collapses first by the primary health care is collapsed. You see misuse every day. The consequence is that Nigeria today has more infant mortality, children dying and their mothers and everything more than India and probably China put together. But more than India, India is seven times our population. But we have more infant mortality than India. We actually, they actually say we will overtake India in 2025. That was predicted in 2020. That the way Nigeria is going, we will overtake them in 2025. But guess what? We overtook them in 2022. We are very fast. And nobody, nobody's worried about that in governance. Because there's no critical thing. Nobody's saying, no, we can't have this. What are we going to do? We're going to build...
also a present United Nations diplomat. Please, we welcome you to the high table. Please, may we make him welcome. Put your hands together for him, please. Professor Stella Okuna, Chief of Staff to the Governors, who will also recognize you. Please, can you come up to the high table? Please make them welcome, make them welcome. We recognize the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, the, the faculty that is harboring the Department of Philosophy celebrating this today. Is already there. Okay, as I was so, as I'm told here, Oseleke Obaze was the guest speaker of 2018 Philosophy World Day. So we recognize him again. Please, your hands together for him. We also recognize Professor O.K. Ikechuku, the lead paper presenter of today's ceremony. Please put your hands together for him. As we make him welcome to this honorable ceremony. We have our HOD, who is coordinating the neighbor affair here, and the chief organizer, Professor Arinze Agbanusi, please make him welcome and also salute him for his presence. Okay, we also recognize our own very own Professor Bonacrisus Omegu is here, Reverend Father, very Reverend Father, Professor Bonacrisus Omegu. You're welcome, sir. Also a council member, so we recognize him. Please, can he move up to the high table? Put your hands together for him and make him welcome as he comes to the high table. Our immediate past HOD, Professor Gugwa, we recognize you. We also recognize Professor Paul Ogugwa. We said that. Paul Ogugwa, please make him welcome. We also recognize our very own Professor Harris Odumegu, an eminent scholar. We recognize you, please, your hands together for him. Well, we also are aware that the VC is supposed to be here, Professor Charles Simone, FAS. And um, I know he's on his way to this ceremony. Please, can we recognize him and put our hands together for him in his absence as we wait for him? We also, as time goes on, we are going to also recognize more eminent personalities that are here. But we want to recognize the professors, the doctors, the associate profs, the eminent personalities that are here, the chiefs, the royal highnesses that are here present, departmental heads, HODs, deans, and all people seated here to this noble ceremony. This is the philosophy department welcoming you to the world philosophy and alumni homecoming. Department of Philosophy will also target 2023 UNESCO World Philosophy Day. Please, can we put our hands together for ourselves for making it to this ceremony? Please, our brother, the former SSG, please, Mr. Osele Henry Opaze, should please come to the high table. I think we recognize you, sir. <laughs> Please, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. There was an insistence from some quarters that you need to be here. Thank you. And so, like I rightly said, we're well, welcome to this noble ceremony. And we know today, the theme of today's ceremony is 
the human of the future or future of the human. It is very important for us to understand that humanity is fast developing. It is a philosopher that said, historicity is a specificity of humanity. That the past and the future only have their meaning in relationship to the now. The hic et nu, for those who understand Latin, the here and now. And that is why we are gathered here today. That's why we are gathered here today to recognize that humans are dynamic and they keep moving. So that is what we are going to hear, even from the guest speaker. Yes, the DVC is here, Professor Joseph Ikechuku, Ikechebe, sorry, Ikechebe, please, is here, it's highly welcome, please put your hands together for him, the DVC representing the PC. So, we are going to, not going to waste any time any longer because Sex and is already seated, and so we're going to rise to take up the national anthem, thereafter, we are going to take up the Anambra State's anthem, please.
please let's keep standing for the opening prayer this opening prayer will be done by father Ezani Emefiela please is he here father please can you lead us Nafana na wa na monso otito de richineke ne no kasienu no wa udo de rende mado ndi fefa na so chuku na mado nafana na wa na monso please come put our hands together for almighty god for that powerful inspiration you could see the reaction from the audience that we're expecting some kind of rituals, but we could see it was short and simple. Put your hands together for again for God and for Reverend Father Mephiel. That's wonderful. That's been taken care of. Now it's time to do the needful, which is the breaking of Kola Nuts presentation. While we are waiting for cola nuts, and then we do the presentation. Okay, we take on the chairman's opening remarks. Chairman's opening remark. So we will call on the chairman to do an opening remark so declare the event open uh biko we are oji abago and um all the uh, protocols makusoji they fully fully recognized. Um, honorable our guest speaker, uh, whom I'm going to speak briefly on now, will need to leave soon. So I'm going to go straight to the point. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, the most inspirational leader of our time, and my own president, His Excellency Peter Obi. <laughs> the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Charles Simone, who will join us very shortly. The Deputy Vice Chancellor at Min, the Dean, the um, guest um, lecturer, Professor K. Kechuku, there are the HOD and my Nemo Chair, Professor Stella Chingere Okuna. I have a lot of eminent uh, people also before me here. His Excellency Oseloka Obaze, Professor Nki Obi, Professor Ike Odumegu. Dr. Mira Alike, because let me rest on all duly established protocols. Let me very specially welcome the students who are also here, the people for whom I believe were gathered. It is a singular honor and pleasure for me to be considered worthy to chair this very important gathering. It is Indeed, an honor considering that today is the UNESCO World Philosophy Day. In addition to the alumni homecoming by the Department of Philosophy. And like I noted earlier, I'm extending my warmest regards and greetings to the Vice Chancellor for an amazing work he's doing in this institution. And again, special thanks to the beacon of inspiration who is going to lead us in the conversation of today.
UNESCO, through initiatives like this, reinforces the value of philosophical thought in building bridges between peoples and cultures. It is indeed a testament of the enduring power of ideas and the role of intellectual discourse in shaping a more understanding and peaceful world. Namda Zikio University stands at the forefront of this noble pursuit, fostering philosophical inquiry and educational essential for the development of critical thinking and ethical leadership. And I'm underscoring those two words, critical thinking and ethical leadership. As we delve into today's discussion, let us envision a future where philosophy guides our actions and decisions, leading us towards a world marked by deeper understanding, empathy, and cooperation. I applaud everyone involved in bringing this event to fruition and encourage each participant to actively engage, debate, and reflect. Let us carry forward the insights and inspiration from today into our lives and communities. I urge us all to embrace the power of philosophical thought to transform our world. Let us be the architects of a future where humanity flourishes in wisdom, peace, and solidarity. I am eager to listen to our stakeholders when they discuss this today because Nigeria earnestly is yearning for this type of reflection. And I believe everybody here will understand that today would have been a time well spent. God bless you all as I declare this meeting. Now that the VC is also here, let me again welcome him as I declare this meeting open. Thank you. Can we applaud the Vice Chancellor, please? All right, thank you. MC, and uh, we're going to go straight to the next program now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We thank the, the chairman of today's occasion. We thank him so much, Mr. Valentine Zibo. And um, we welcome, as he has done already, the arrival of uh, VC, Professor Charles. A Simone FAS and his DBC, his vice, Professor Joseph Ikechebe, and um, others who accompanied him. Please, once more, may we do them a welcome by putting our hands together for them. We now want to invite uh, HOD. Professor Oban Obabunike Arinze Agbanusi, Professor of Political Philosophy with bias in Logic and African Philosophy, two tenor as a vice chairperson, full comrade, incumbent national president, Ofu Subakwige Igbo, Nigeria, and two times chairman Oneze Digo Ekusigo local government area. Please can we put our hands together for him? Thank you very much. I wish to recognize the presence of His Excellency Mr. P2P and to thank him for being here for us. We recognize the presence of the chairman of this occasion, Valentine Chineto Ozibo, our own vice chancellor, Professor Charles Okechuku Esimone, FAS. Please, um, because of um, the want of, uh, because of one time, time, I hope you pardon me if I say to uh, leave off the rest of the protocol. With a great sense of humor and a deep sense of responsibility, 
I welcome you all to this wonderful occasion, the 2023 UNESCO World Philosophy Day and the Philosophy Alumni Homecoming. In the year 2002, the social and human sciences sector of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, launched Philosophy Day. In October 2005, the UNESCO General Conference inaugurated the World Philosophy Day and set aside the third Thursday in November every year for its celebration. In line with the culture of this celebration, philosophers all over the world, their academic siblings and friends gather in some strategic venues, just as we have gathered here today, to brainstorm on some vital issues aimed at fostering interpersonal and intrapersonal relationships, social cohesion and human development. The UNESCO World Philosophy Day is the day in which philosophy is reaffirmed as the mother of all other disciplines, for which reason the highest academic degree is the PhD, which is an acronym for Philosophy Doctor or Doctor of Philosophy. Hence, we have PhD in this discipline or PhD in that discipline. Talking about UNESCO World Philosophy Day, one question that comes to mind is, what is philosophy? As we already know, apart from the etymological definition of philosophy as the love of wisdom, derived from the Greek words philein and sophia, there is no universally accepted definition of philosophy. This is predominantly because of the fact that various definitions come from philosophers who have different cosmologies, ideologies, idiosyncrasies. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to cut this address short since you have it there in the brochure. Um, let me just um, go to the last part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, today is another day. This department has over the years, sorry. The Department of Philosophy Namda Ziki Way University, having been led by capable heads of department over the years, has produced innumerable number of graduates who have made very remarkable contributions in various areas of service. However, the department has needs, which if addressed, will make it better than it is today. Our needs include, though not limited to the following, philosophy building, a departmental vehicle, Endowment for scholarship funds for indigent and blind students of the department. Equipping of existing lecture halls, including the procurement of smart boards, voice amplifiers, laptops, and printers. And then five, bookshelves for the offices of the professors and other lecturers of the department. The department has over the years organized events which had as speakers renowned personalities, including Professor M. Angola Ongojogu, Dean Chiku Emeka Odumegu Ojuku, Ezibu Buruburu, Reverend Monsaino, Professor Theophilus Okere, His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Valerian Madoka Okeke, Archbishop of Onitsha and Metropolitan of Onitsha Ecclesiastical Province, and Bishop Matthew Hasankuka, Bishop of Koto, Sokoto uh, Catholic Diocese. Ladies and gentlemen, today is another day. I welcome you all to this great event the 2023 UNESCO World Philosophy Day. With a team, the universal team is the human of the future. However, we made an extension and arrived at the human of the future and the future of the human. Our chief guest of honor and keynote speaker is a man who is too well known for an introduction. A man who fits into Aristotle's definition of a knowledgeable person as one who knows at least something about everything. A man of impeccable character, an epitome of decency. A man whose experience is reminiscent of Patrice Lumumba. Patrice Lumumba was deposed by the draconian Ugandan president, Idi Amin. And few days after they met, Idi Amin said to him, I'm sorry for you, Mr. Mulumba, Lumumba, because the very day I deposed you from office, I knew your days were numbered. But Lumumba replied and said to Amin, Great Amin, do not be sorry for me, but be sorry for the entire citizens of Congo, 
who shall one day say, where is our Lumumba? A man who fits into Aristotle's description of the philosopher king. For Plato, the nonsense in leadership will never cease until philosophers are kings or kings become philosophers. That award is going to be given today for the first time ever. The, the philosopher king of the year 2023 would soon be declared in this very event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't think that is enough for uh, Professor HOD. Please, another round of applause for him. Thank you so much. Um, in a very rural area, a little boy who came from the urban area met another boy and he said, now we want to recognize, before our visit we talk to us, we want to recognize briefly and quickly Professor Wana Ifejora, the former DVC UNISIC, 1996 to 1998. Please put your hands together for him. And we also want to call on our father and DVC, Professor Charles Simon FS, to say one or two words to us. Sir, you're welcome. Put your hands together for our DVC. Oh, so we have our DVC. Thank you very much, His Excellency and the Chairman and other guests who have been duly acknowledged through protocol. Today is not a day of long speeches. Uh, His Excellency has a tight schedule and uh, he has a flight in about 30 minutes. So I just want to say welcome to Namda Sikiwe University and uh, we look forward to uh, this wonderful day, the day that philosophers will celebrate their, uh, their day and culture. Everybody in the university is a philosopher. of Anambra State Government. Please put your hands together for her. Please can she come and read the citation for His Excellency. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. I will read anything. Uh, Your Excellency, the Vice Chancellor, all on the high table, very distinguished guests, our dear students, greetings. Um, the, the citation of P2B is boldly written in your programs. Do you have programs, students? Please make sure you circulate, even if it's a photocopy of this, please. Organize, HOD, please. They need to see this citation. It will inspire them into achieving greatness themselves. So I will read it, but I, let me tell you in summary that you are privileged. Privileged, privileged. You have bragging rights that Peter will be speaking here today. Because um, people who know me know I'm a very modest, I don't boast, but this one, I am boasting. That we worked, I worked for eight years with a man who is world class as a leader, who is indomitable in the things he does, who is intelligent and extremely diligent, who is a, a man of the people, grassroots oriented, much loved, much appreciated by the people. You will listen to him today. He has done well as governor. Of